Sir Lucas, favourite fictional ape? It's got to be the king of the jungle, Donkey Kong. Yeah! Those bushmeat combos, man. Let's go. DC Comics has at its disposal a veritable pantheon of characters more recognisable than most world leaders, and while the company owes much of its success to stories featuring those characters, it owes just a little bit of that success to lesser-known stories featuring giant rampaging apes. So yeah, DC does have, like, a, a couple of like ape characters, like Gorilla Grodd's probably the most famous one. Yeah, like, there are a few apes amongst the ranks of DC comic heroes and villains, and as you mentioned, Gorilla Grodd, the telekinetic super ape, is probably one of the <laughs> most famous, and he's the one who appears in arguably the most pieces of media related to DC. Because not only has he appeared in the comics, he's appeared in um, the cartoons, um, often appearing as a villain um, in the Flash's Rogue Gallery. He's also appeared mm -hmm. in the Flash live-action TV show, where he's a big, dumb CGI gorilla. <laughs> and he looks awful. And then he's also appeared in the Injustice video games. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I love his introductions in that game, because he carries like the human skull. And it's like, Gah! So it's the Mars attacks with it. With Grodd, all things are possible. And as I mentioned, he's telekinetic and wants to take over the world. Because, fun fact about Gorilla Grodd for people who don't know, his backstory is, is that he lives in a city called, I shit you not, Gorilla City, inhabited <laughs> entirely by super intelligent apes. Like, he's probably the most famous, but there are other lesser known gorillas in the DC pantheon of characters, including the Ultra Humanite, who is an albino gorilla who quotes Shakespeare. And he's appeared in a few pieces of media, but not as many as Gorilla Grodd, including, again, okay the cartoons, and then you have Monsieur Malar, who is a beret-wearing ape who's best friends with a brain in a jar. And the best thing about Monsieur Malar is that the relationship between him and the aforementioned brain in a jar is hinted at being sexual in nature. <laughs> oh my god, no. no. <laughs> As in, like, the ape is in love with the brain. Oh god. And Monsieur Malar goes literally ape shit when the brain is damaged or taken away from him. <laughs> <laughs> he fires a big machine gun. <laughs> so you've got an ape oh. with a beret and a machine gun. But we're not done because going even more obscure, you have Kong Gorilla, who is an immortal giant golden ape who just fights people in the jungle. And then even more obscure than that, you have Titano, the crypto ape, who is a giant gorilla who fires kryptonite beams from his eyes. And that's just a couple of my favourite DC apes, because there are many, many more, a list of which will no doubt be scrolling below me in a fact bar um, as I'm speaking. But yeah, just like, there's a lot of apes in DC, isn't there? I'm now trying to think, like, does Marvel have many famous apes? Because obviously we're talking about DC, but like, Marvel must have some apes, surely. But I can't think of any. Okay, Carl, so what is the deal with these DC apes? Well, this is a trend that can be traced back to the 1950s when editors of DC Comics noticed that for some reason, any time they had a comic with an ape on the cover, it would sell more. And as a result, uh, they instructed their writers just put more apes into stories. Like, we don't care what the story justification is, just put as many apes in as you can, which resulted in just this dearth of ape characters. But here's the thing that makes this so deliciously hilarious, and it's that the editors didn't know why comics featuring apes sold better, they just know that they did. So they just told writers, it doesn't matter how loose the justification is to include an ape, just put the ape in. It doesn't matter because it sells more regardless. It doesn't matter how bad the story is or how like irrelevant the ape is to the plot, as long as we can tell an artist to put it on the cover. Uh, which, in addition to being hilarious, kind of shits all over that old adage of don't judge a book by its cover. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, people certainly did back then. And you can see why. Because back then, comics lived or died by whether or not newsstands wanted to stock them. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there wasn't really, like, the rampant fanboyism that exists today for DC or Marvel. It's just, no, it's a comic book. Mm -hmm. like, you read the comic book that has, like, that appears to have the most interesting story on the cover. And yeah. for some reason, just people liked apes, and DC liked to put more apes on. And, and I should know that DC weren't the only people who did this, and there have been entire books written about the comic medium's fascination with giant rampaging primates. It's just that DC Comics are the only company that I'm aware of that not only acknowledge the existence of this trope, like apes always sell more copies, it's that they actively embraced it, even though they didn't know why. 
And that's just really funny to me. Just having an ape on the front of the cover, surely that's not that enticing. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? So allow me to um, just run an experiment with you now, Luke. And I'm going to describe um, an actual comic cover that um, existed around the time. And it is the first introduction of Titano the Crypto Ape. And that cover features a 100 foot tall rampaging gorilla firing kryptonite beams from its eyes that appear to have weakened Superman as Lois Lane, Superman's girlfriend, stands slightly off to the side, imploring the ape to wear a pair of kryptonite blocking sunglasses. And Lucas, just from that description, would you not want to check out that comic to see what the fuck was going on? Okay, fair enough. You have got a giant gorilla firing a beam of crypto energy directly into Superman's arsehole. I looked at that and went, what the hell? How did Titano... What is Titano? Who is Titano? <laughs> How is he doing this? And as I mentioned, DC weren't the only company to do this. And it's been noted by experts that man has long had a fascination with apes of the giant variety. And we touched upon that before, briefly in a video about just how the idea of King Kong came to be. And it was literally the guy who invented King Kong just really liked gorillas. Specifically stories he'd heard about giant man-eating gorillas that lived in the deepest, darkest parts of the jungle and kidnapped women and fought against equally as giant, like, lizards and things. And if anyone wants to refresh it on that video, the entire impetus for the King Kong movie, one of the most influential movies of all time, is that that guy just wanted to see a gorilla fight a Komodo dragon. But even before the existence of movies themselves, just, as I mentioned, stories about giant gorillas, and giant ape-like creatures were some of the most popular stories told by sailors and explorers when they came back to the West. Like, did you know there are giant rampaging man-beasts out there that live in the jungle? People love those stories. Mm, and you yeah, fast forward yeah. 100, 150 years and DC is putting giant laser firing apes on their cover. And I'd say that that idea holds true even today. Given that I'm guessing a lot of the people watching this very video clicked it because there was an ape in the thumbnail. And Lucas, you mentioned in this video that your favourite fictional ape is um, the King of the Jungle himself, Donkey Kong, yes? Yeah, he's the leader of the bunch, and he you is. know well. <laughs> God damn it, Lucas, damn it. Not only, Carl, is he, you know, basically the origin of Nintendo in video games. Yes. Um, he is also a very fucking fun character to play in Super it, Smash Bros. He is, because he has that three or four dunks, like Donkey Kong. You can't beat it, and then like um, uh, the, f the way our friend puts it, like you're doing his bush meat combos, like the down slap, just the ooh, ooh, knock people straight down, no mercy, like just no fucks even by that Donkey Kong. Oh, and me and you play so hard, and I play the bright green Kong, the fact fiend Kong. Yeah, and I don't think I can pick out a favorite fictional gorilla because I fucking love gorillas. They're so hilarious. Okay. They're so awesome. But um, a favorite gorilla moment in fiction has got to be in the film Rise of the Planet of the Apes, where you have the big um, gorilla who is the bodyguard of Caesar, and the ending of the film, I'm going to describe it as it happens, Lucas, and I shit you not, I'm not making any of this up, uh, and I'm not exaggerating in any way, where you have a bunch of apes and gorillas charging across the Golden Gate Bridge as a police helicopter opens fire on them with a machine gun. And the gorilla sprints out from behind the car while being shot at repeatedly and does the Harambe Revenger on the helicopter and tackles it out of the air. And it's fucking brilliant. It's great, I love it. And that's one of my favorite like ape moments in fiction. Uh, closely followed by that moment in Kong Skull Island where the school call is about to eat somebody, and you see in the horizon King Kong flying into frame with a giant boulder in his hands. <laughs> I do love me some Donkey Kong, but I'm more a fan of just Donkey Kong as a character as opposed to the games he appears in, because he's just... There's just something about him that's really charming. It's like the image of an ape wearing a necktie is very amusing to me. Yeah. And I love how expressive he is in the Smash Bros games. Like, there's nothing better than landing that dunk, Don coptering your way back onto stage, and then just doing the down taunt, the ooh. So good. Or like, every time he gets punched, his eyes pop out of his head. 
Or like in the King K rule reveal, where almost every frame in which Donkey Kong is visible can be turned into a meme. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think we still use it like, every time we say, oh, we're going to play Smash Bros on stream. We just use that, that, that one second looping gif of just Donkey Kong in the window going, Wah! just cheering. Yeah, just losing his shit. It's so good. It's so hype. Yeah. I love it. And even though I've not played many Donkey Kong games, I'm still somewhat aware of the lore just because of Smash Bros and the headcanon me and you and Charlie have created for it. Yeah. Because uh, uh, you can confirm, can't you, Luke, because like, when we're playing, when we're getting serious and playing some Smash, and I bust out Donkey Kong, if you beat me a few times, I'll go and I'll pick like the white-coloured Kong. The wise Kong. Wise Kong. Kong. Yeah. <laughs> wise, <laughs> just, wise Kong. He's the wisest of the Kong. He's trained in the hyperbolic time chamber and he emerges as wise Kong. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. So, it's so dumb that you can do that with it. Just something about the word Kong as well. Like wise oh, yeah. Kong, the wisest of the Kongs. It's so funny. You can't not respect this giant gorilla who wears a necktie. <laughs> you know, like he's fashionable and he knows it. 